today. To the Xbox 360 scratch discs, the highest court in the land has nothing better to do except decide once and for all. This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Checkpoint for January 18th, 2016, or for our viewers in the Southern Hemisphere, Moklu Otienov Pesk Rof Nyorange 816102. Mario Maker is fun in theory, but in execution the game seems to have drifted from its premise of let's make and share Mario levels more towards can I make a complete stranger on the other side of the world embed their Wii U gamepad inside their television. That new vision isn't quite Nintendo's speed, and the company is now starting to delete Mario Maker levels that are unpopular. A vague catch-all term Nintendo is now using to mean levels that either have low plays, low ratings, low completion scores, or some combination thereof. The real kicker is that once Nintendo deletes a level, you can't re-upload it, even if you've edited it. So it means a lot of hard work is going in the toilet. Because it's Nintendo, a company known for their openness, transparency, and respect for independent content creators, if your level is deleted, there's basically nothing you can do. So, if you want to avoid the fate of having your levels deleted, follow Checkpoint's simple F-O-R-K rule. If your level would make someone seriously consider jamming a red-hot fork into their eyes as an alternative to playing it, maybe reconsider. You've probably heard that Sony Computer Entertainment recently tried to trademark the term Let's Play. You know, because they have such a solid claim to the term that something awful user Slow Beef coined and popularized in 2007 and now is simply a universal genre term for watching someone play video games. It's not clear why Sony wanted this trademark for electronic transmission and streaming of video games via global and local computer networks, but it's probably because they want to add some sort of Let's Play categorization or functionality to PlayStation Network, which would be cool, except you can't just trademark a genre. Certainly not when things like Rooster Teeth's Let's Play YouTube channel exist. So the trademark was obviously denied. Not because of everything I just said, but because Sony's filing was too similar to an existing filing for Let's Play, with that 6Z value, a trademark for services allowing video game enthusiasts to meet for tournaments. Sony has six months to appeal the denial, but they could probably save themselves a lot of lawyer money by using a little common sense. Sadly, those lawyers are probably making it their job to ensure that doesn't happen. Do you like hot legal action? Well, it's time to dust off your Xbox 360 then, because the scratched disc class action lawsuit is going all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States. Since it's been nine years since the original suit was filed, here's a quick refresher. When the 360 first came out, sometimes people's discs would get scratched while they were being played. According to testimony, Taken in the case, Microsoft was aware that a game could be damaged if the console was repositioned by a user while the console was reading the disc, which means those who had their games damaged should be able to go forward with a class action lawsuit. Apparently Microsoft rejected possible fixes for the issue because they would have added a massive 50 cents to the Xbox 360's manufacturing costs. Presumably in its defense, Microsoft has used this time-honored legal argument of what the fuck did you think was going to happen if you moved your console while you were playing a game, you goober? Looking forward to hearing what Antonin Scalia and Ruth Bader Ginsburg have to say about this. The 2015 sales numbers are in, and it's Call of Duty. It's always Call of Duty. Black Ops 3 was the number one selling game of 2015, ahead of Madden 16, Fallout 4, and Star Wars Battlefront. In fact, Call of Duty has been the number one selling game in North America for the last seven straight years. Worldwide, it suffered a staggering blow in 2013, falling to number two behind Grand Theft Auto V. Which is actually the most interesting part of the 2015 sales story, because I already told you the top four games in 2015. The fifth best-selling game in 2015 was Grand Theft Auto V. This story doesn't have a punchline, we just thought it was really interesting, and that's got to feel bad for whoever came in sixth. What was that? Oh, Arkham Knight came sixth. Scratch that, we do have a punchline. John St. John, best known as the voice of Duke Nukem, will not be known as the voice of a Republican presidential campaign. St. John posted to Facebook that, much as he doesn't like turning down well-paying work, he did turn down being the voice of advertising for, quote, a leading Republican presidential candidate, later clarifying Donald Trump or Ted Cruz. I would allege that neither man has balls of steel, but that the two men's balls are leathery and doughy, respectively, both of which sound far less cool. So, thanks to John St. John's conscience and, selective, and being selective in accepting jobs, you won't be hearing him shill for the GOP. 
but you will be able to hear more of Mr. St. John's dulcet tones in the upcoming game, Dude Bro, My Shit Is Fucked Up So I Gotta Shoot Slash Slice You Too, It's Straight Up Dog Time. That was not a joke. Whatever millennial in the Trump campaign offices thought of hiring John St. John, honestly, that was a stellar plan. In his absence, I hear Hulk Hogan is available and allegedly racist. Coming up, in memory of David Bowie, Square Enix is giving away free digital copies of Omicron the Nomad Soul, an early Quantic Dream game that Bowie contributed to and cameoed in. Come for the David Bowie, leave when you realize it's David Cage. Did the Xbox 360 scratch discs? The highest court in the land has nothing to do ex except... what? What? Hang on.